Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 Weapon Spotlight, where today we're going to take a look at an anti-armor, faster fire rate, faster reload assault rifle with a full health build. The assault rifle in Fallout 76 is, in my opinion, one of the more maybe unjustly maligned weapons in the game. Uh, it's definitely uh, outperformed by a number of other options, but it does offer some unique benefits unto itself. We'll also talk in the conclusion about some changes that I think they could make to this weapon to make it a little more interesting. Remember, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. There's always a lot more coming on the channel. And without further ado, let's get into things. As always, I'm going to put timestamps in the video here so you can jump around as needed. We're going to start with a look at the weapon and the build. If you're already fairly familiar with that stuff and you want to jump ahead to the testing, you can just go right ahead and do that. Whatever works for you. Let's take a look at the weapon. So here we can see it. It's an anti-armor assault rifle with faster fire rate and 15% faster reload. The anti-armor effect is particularly beneficial on a weapon like this that doesn't have super high base damage. So basically, the higher the damage you get out of each shot, the less you kind of need anti-armor. So something like this that's a little more middle of the road, um, we get a little bit more for our money with anti-armor than we do out of something like a handmade or a fixer. So that's good. 25% uh, faster fire rate is also really good on this. The weapon has a pretty good fire rate to begin with, but improving that, uh, boosting that up a little bit, it just makes it feel really good to shoot it. It feels kind of just right. The other benefit this weapon has is that it naturally has a very fast reload. It's a really quick magazine swap. So when we improve that by 15%, that's a huge benefit. And then uh, combining that with Speed Demon, it's a lightning quick reload. The other thing I love about this weapon is the super low recoil. So we'll see it in VATS and we'll see it out of VATS and you can really see uh, just how easy it is to use this weapon. I think we get the point of all that. Normally at this point I would show you my mutations, but uh, as I uh, record this here I realize that I forgot to get footage of them. So uh, you can reference any of my numerous Stealth Commando video weapon videos if you want to see them, it's pretty much the usual stuff. Nothing has really changed. So we'll take a look at legendary perks now. Uh, we start with Ammo Factory. This is my main character on PC, so I've got that maxed out so I can craft as much ammo as possible. That perk does stack with Ammo Factory and Super Duper, so uh, bear that in mind when you're crafting. But uh, grinding for materials is my least favorite activity in this game. And that helps me grind a whole lot less, so it makes me quite happy. The next one up is Legendary Intelligence. Ultimately, this will get maxed out to uh, the full four stars so that I can run Gunsmith and Demolition Expert at the same time. But uh, right now, it's just got one point in it, so we got to live with what we got to live with. Third in line here is Legendary Charisma, and this is a big one. Don't do this. Uh, I did this early on with a bunch of characters thinking it was the right way to go, not realizing that boosting your intelligence this way, or your charisma rather this way, doesn't actually let you share more, more perk cards or stronger perk cards. So better way to do that is boost up charisma in your build, use a legendary special perk somewhere else to make up for what you took away. But the key is it lets you take more charisma perks. Pretty straightforward stuff. Finally, we've got follow through. Follow through is going to be really important on any stealth build or any stealth ranged build, I should say. And it's definitely important for a weapon like this that does a little bit lower damage. Basically, what this does is after we land one sneak attack, we can now make our enemy take more damage on the follow up shots. So that can be really useful if we use it right. And finally, we round things out with legendary endurance and legendary luck. Legendary endurance, I've got two points in here mainly so that I can take uh, Revenant, which is going to give me more damage if I get uh, revived during a big fight. That's not going to be a factor today because I'm going to be running solo, but uh, in normal playthrough it is. So if I get revived at a queen fight or Earl or something like that, we get to do a little bit of extra damage, which is helpful. And of course, maxing out legendary luck means I can put points somewhere else while still being able to 
max out all my VAT's critical perks, and that's going to be important today as well because, again, lower damage weapon, full health build. We want to take advantage of that and get as many criticals as possible. Let's go ahead and take a look at the special build and the regular perk cards. So first up, we've got two points in strength for Bandolier to cut down on ballistic ammo weight. Perception is maxed out. We've got all of our commando cards almost maxed out, except for one point. That allows us to take one point in concentrated fire so we can target weak points, which is really important, uh, especially again with a lower damage weapon. Uh, you want to make sure you get every bonus you can and getting double damage on headshots and weak point shots is really key. Uh, but it also allows us to take tank killer and uh, ground pounder so we get faster reload, better hip fire accuracy, all that good stuff. Endurance, I've got it three because of the legendary perk. So I've got Radical on here. Normally I run a low health build, so I'm gating my health with Rad, so why not pick up the extra strength from that? Not really going to be a factor today, but I also didn't really have anything else to put in there. Uh, Charisma, we've got at seven. Going to run solo today, so uh, three points for Tenderizer to make enemies take a little more damage as they take hits. And then we've got four points in Lone Wanderer, so we can take a little less damage and get some better AP refresh, which is important because we don't have low health. We're not running unyielding armor, so we're going to burn up AP a little more than we normally would. Intelligence is at 10 points. Again here, got Nerd Rage, normally low health, not going to be a factor today. Uh, batteries included is really just a, a random placeholder. Why not save a couple of pounds here and there if I can uh, while I wait to max out that legendary perk and be able to take uh, uh, Demolition Expert and Gunsmith all at the same time. We've got Scrapper for more steel when we scrap weapons, and of course Gunsmith for better weapon condition. Under Agility, we've got Covert Operative and Sneak both maxed out. Covert Operative is going to give us a better Sneak Attack multiplier. And keeping Sneak on is also going to be a big help because that's going to let us uh, stay hidden. Now, I am running the Chinese Stealth Suit today, so that does a very good job, but it, I still feel like it's not as good as a full set of Unyielding Armor. So those extra sneak perks definitely give us a little bit more of an edge. Escape Artist is there, so if we do get into trouble, we can uh, get away and get back into caution status. Gun Fu to swap targets automatically for a little damage bonus along the way. And Adrenaline, so that as we take on uh, enemies in a mob, we'll do more damage along the way. Now we're going to make a quick change in luck because uh, Serendipity is on there, and it really doesn't need to be for today. We can go with something else. So what we'll do is pop that off of there and put better criticals on so that'll give us better VATS critical damage when we do get VATS criticals in uh, combination with the kind of hodgepodge of other perks that I have here to help me get more critical chances. Now here in luck we also have bloody mess for extra damage, class freak and starch gene so we can keep our mutations and reduce their negative effects, and that pretty much rounds it out. All right, everybody, I think we've done enough chit chat here. Let's head over to the White Spring and see how this works out. OK, into the White Spring Golf Club we go. We are rocking the Chinese stealth suit, so we'll be nice and invisible the whole time. And let's just take care of that rad roach now before he becomes a problem. We don't need him detecting us and messing up our stealth. Line up some headshots with vats. And you can see the vats accuracy isn't amazing because we don't have like 9 million perception like we usually do with unyielding armor. But it's not bad. Uh, you know, helps if I get that column out of the way. Come on. There you go. Okay. And one more. Looks good. So, yeah. Quick and easy kills. A uh, little more, maybe a couple more bullets than we're used to seeing, but not too bad. And there's a good example of the uh, low recoil of the weapon as well. So far, so good. Vats headshots, nice and easy with ghouls. That's exactly what we want to see. But one thing I do want to check here, I am feeling like my reloads are a bit slower than they should be. So let's just go ahead and swap another weapon on. And mouse is acting up a little bit strange here. Seems to be weird with the, uh, the stealth suit on. Uh, anyway, we got it under control. That should speed up the reloads. And, uh, yep, that's quicker. Okay. Yeah, anytime you feel like your reloads are a little slow, just swap weapons quick. 
Uh, that's kind of a combination of perks and the mutation, for whatever reason, just not loading up quickly enough. And we've got a three-star Fat Man. Maybe one day we'll try that out and uh, manage to do it without blowing our own legs off. Eh, probably not. That's wishful thinking. All right, let's go ahead and finish this place up. And no, Fisty, you can't jump over the displays there, apparently. Okay, cool. No big deal. Get a little Vats Critical lined up. And we'll go in here. Guns blazing. Not really. We're nice and sneaky. Got to be careful in this room. This is the one where I get trapped in the corner sometimes. All right, ghouls, good job. Didn't put me in the corner and murder me like you often do. And we're getting just a little bit of lag here in the White Spring. That's not too uncommon, unfortunately. We are on PC today. Hopefully, uh, when my new PC comes, uh, you know, at some point in the distant future, when uh, graphics cards become available, I guess, uh, maybe that'll clean that up a little bit. We'll see. But so far, we're looking pretty good. And now we've got the glowing one. Another easy kill. There you can see follow through kick in on those headshots towards the end. Now, one thing you'll notice with follow through on automatic weapons is you do kind of have to pause and then begin shooting again. Otherwise, it doesn't always kick in. There it kicked in because we paused. So uh, on ghouls, that's not really a problem. But uh, on other enemies, it can be where you're really counting on it, but ghouls are pretty squishy, so you don't really need to rely on follow through to get them. I think we get the point here. Let's head over to the deep. All right, here we are on the catwalk to Kami land, waiting for the liberators to come. Easy enough, there's another great low recoil hip fire. And that's one of the things I really like about this weapon. And it, you know, one of the other things I like about, it, especially with the suppressor on it, I just like the feel of it. The sound is good, the recoil is low, it's fun to use. Uh, I, I wish that it did as much damage as a handmaid or a fixer. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but we can still see that with a good stealth commando build, it does just fine. Ultimately, I think uh, it could be balanced a little bit differently if they changed the ammo type. Uh, rather than shooting 5.56, it should shoot 5 millimeter in my opinion. I think that would be a good uh, a good trade-off for the lower damage. Let's just make our way up the catwalk here, find that missile sniper on the roof, and we'll talk a little bit at the end in the conclusions about uh, why I think that would be a good change, but uh, we won't dwell on that here. Let's go hunting for commies first. Easy enough. It fires nice and accurate. Just got to get a little closer to be able to line up on the head, and that gets the job done. Let's head around back. We'll have uh, another soldier back here and a commander in power armor, if everything is working as planned. So here, a little bit too far away for the hip fire to work. I mean, I guess it would have worked if I would have gone for the torso, but didn't quite have the accuracy we needed for the headshot. That's critical. And even in power armor, goes down in three shots easy. Can't ask for much more than that, and this is not a low health build. This is a full health stealth commando build using the Chinese stealth armor. So not even legendary armor. You can do very well. Not even legendary armor. Not a god roll weapon. It's a good weapon, but it's definitely not one that uh, most people would go uh, really crazy for. But you can see it works absolutely fine, at least on uh, these humanoid enemies. We'll see how it does against some tougher things in a bit. But for now, we're doing okay. There we go. Follow through, you could see the extra damage kick in. Make our way up the stairs, stay nice and quiet. We use vats up here so we don't get into trouble. And I don't think we've been detected yet either. That's a good thing too. Let's head over to Solomon's Pond and take out the Behemoth. Now, here's one where I definitely want to let follow through trigger. This is going to be a bigger, tankier enemy. Let's just get nice and close. Land a shot. 
And now you can see follow through kicking in. Now there's vats on the head and I'm pretty convinced at this point that that's an animation thing because it seems to happen very consistently. If he's in that uh, animation rising out of the water, he just doesn't seem to take vats damage, which is no fun. But he's dead now, so let's go kill some Scorched. Off we go to the Fisher site, and if you're wondering which Fisher site it is, it's the one up in the northeast near Vault 79. If you ever want to visit here yourself, as you're, uh, you know, traveling Appalachia, you want to see all the sites. How you doing there, guys? Okay, now we're in danger. That's not good. Let's see if we can just uh, murder our way out of danger. No, I think we better run. Chinese stealth suit uh, is very stealthy, but it's not very good armor. So we've got them all in a nice little group. Let's see what we can do here. What are they? What are they fighting? <laughs> they were all distracted and saw something else. So something else over there is more interesting than me. I don't know what that something is. Okay, we have we have Pack Brahmin running across the Fisher site. I guess maybe there was a uh, a traveling merchant or something with them, and maybe they killed the traveling merchant. Well, the Pack Brahmin are just kind of hanging out here. We're just chilling right by a Fisher. You know, Scorched Beast running around, a bunch of Scorched here. We don't care. It's fine. But, uh, yeah, you know, I've been doing this, and I haven't been talking about the weapon a whole lot, but it's working pretty well, despite being a little bit lower damage. It's getting the job done just fine. I haven't really felt like it's super underpowered at any point. That fast fire rate really makes up for uh, a little bit of the damage downside. But overall, it's not bad. So even at a distance here, we're doing all right. Let's take out that Scorch Beast. Come on, and uh, now the AP... Uh, and oh, I'm dead. Oh, I know what I did there. So normally, I run a dense mod on my chest piece, which completely makes you completely immune to those Scorch Beast attacks. But you can't do that on the stealth suit. And I'm so used to having it that I didn't really even think about healing or protecting myself there. So yeah, uh, way to go, Fisty. Get yourself killed by a Scorch Beast. Anybody else hanging out over here? Just take a quick peek and see if any other enemies came crawling out of the woodwork with those uh, pack Brahmin over there. But it doesn't look like it. Looks like we're just uh, we're just hanging out, and they seem to have uh, gone about their business. Let's head on over to Huntersville and wrap this thing up. So as always, we'll start with the floaters down the road from town. Try a little bit of hip fire action there, and they're just a little too wobbly for that. And we're taking a little bit of damage over time, but I'm less worried about that at full health than I am with uh, a bloodied build. So that's kind of a nice perk there. It is nice to be able to run at full health and still do halfway decent damage. Now, one drawback, of course, is running out of AP. So uh, I did opt for uh, more sneak and gun foo and things like that instead of action boy. Maybe Action Boy would have been a better choice. That's certainly something worth debating. And there you can see that hip fire accuracy and the low recoil really in action. Let's head up here. I'm going to try and do a little more of that, even though it means it's not going to do as much damage to the weak points, just to showcase that. I mean, there's just nothing. You do short bursts with this and it's tight. It's right on target. There, none of that crazy muzzle climb that you get from fixers or... 10 millimeter submachine guns, or even the Handmaid. The Handmaid's recoil is still heavier than this. So there's a lot of good things about this weapon. The only really bad thing about it is the fact that it does lower damage than its counterparts, which doesn't really make a ton of sense. It's the same barrel length, and it's the same ammunition type as a Handmaid. There's really no reason it shouldn't be doing the same damage, but hey, whatever. And we've got a Legendary here. With a Berserker's Guitar Sword. There we go. Now we've got everything a boy could dream of with that Berserker's Guitar Sword. Alright, we've got a Face Eater. And another Mutant. 
All right, let's take out the face eater before he eats my face. Thank you. One more who lives downstairs. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Oh, don't you worry, super mutant. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. I've got presents. I've got gifts for you. I've got free bullets for you. I will hand deliver them at range. Looks good so far. We can handle high level super mutants with no trouble. Let's run up the road here and just finish clearing out the town. We should have a boy and his dog on the road here somewhere. Where are they? Behind me. Okay. Ah, coming up from the side. I see where you're at. And there's his little face eater. And face eaters. Oh, I must have crippled him. Okay. All right, I'll take that. And then we should have one up here under the... Uh, under the checkpoint and there you can see the power of follow through kicking in we go from 88 to 159 damage on the torso and we're going to make one little extra pit stop today we're going to head over to pylon v13 and the abandoned bog town take out a couple of snally gasters and then we're going to get a shot at another behemoth and a couple of more super mutants here just because I feel like we got robbed with the first behemoth not gonna lie that's robbed us the way it processed everything was just not fun so uh, we'll take another shot here just quick do a scrap of that cryolator just in case I can learn some mods but didn't work out that way today all right make our way up through the grass creep up here stay in stealth Shouldn't be a problem, but at least with this behemoth, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we don't have to worry about that animation where he's rising out of the water. So there we go. Torso shots. Nice and easy. And he's moonwalking. OK, now we should have follow through kicking in. Missiles flying. Not too bad. He is a tank. Level 100. We'll do some Vats headshots. Vats headshots are definitely more effective. So you can see where, uh, you know, when you get these tankier targets, you can definitely see where the damage deficiency is with this weapon. If that were a handmade or a fixer, they would be going down faster. No question about it. We'll take out this last one. And now let's talk conclusions. Big question, as always, is, is this weapon good? Well, yes, it's good. It's not as good as some other Stealth Commando weapons, but the build is so powerful that it's kind of hard to go wrong with any automatic rifle. Still, this one has a good combo going for it, anti-armor to help it hit harder, faster fire rate to boost the overall DPS, and lightning fast reloads to push that even further. The biggest thing with this weapon though, and the reason I like it so much, is because it feels good to use it. The fire rate feels just right. The recoil is super low and the hip fire accuracy is good enough that I don't even need to aim down the sights. It's also accurate enough in VATS that I can still use that as much as I want. There's a lot to like here. The only thing not to like is the fact that it does significantly less damage than its counterparts. For a lot of enemies like ghouls, that doesn't really matter. But for tankier things like super mutants, the difference was notable. Not a deal breaker, but notable. As I mentioned earlier, I think there's a way to balance this out. The improved recoil, reload speed, and hip fire accuracy are all great, and they do offset some of that damage loss a little bit. But what it really needs is an ammo change. This weapon should fire 5mm instead of 5.56. That would make the damage loss much more acceptable. 5mm is plentiful in the wasteland, and it's super cheap to craft. I would in all likelihood switch from a fixers and handmade as my main weapons to an assault rifle if it would shoot 5mm. But because it uses 5.56, it's kind of pointless to give up the damage despite the fact that I like using the weapon more than a handmade. That change could be a really interesting twist on things and could help diversify things just a bit. The only reason the assault rifle uses 5.56 is because it did in Fallout 4. 
but in Fallout 4, it was also the only weapon that used 5.56, aside from one unique combat rifle. When they introduced the handmade rifle with the Nuka World DLC, it came with new ammo as well. It used 7.62. That's a more powerful cartridge, which also carried more damage. That all made sense. But now in 76, they chose not to bring over that ammo type and stuck with 5.56 instead. That's fine, but it makes the assault rifle kind of useless once you can get a handmade. So there you have it. Switch the ammo type to 5mm, keep everything else the same, and I think you could turn around the perception of the assault rifle. As of now, it's not as good as its other Stealth Commando counterparts, but it also doesn't deserve the reputation for weakness that it has. As we saw, it's still a very solid choice. That's going to do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. As always, if you enjoyed this video, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment. There's always a lot more to come on the channel in the future, and I hope I see you all next time.